started. Get real close to you. I like Where that. Where is that? No, what? Okay. Don't touch each other. I didn't touch him. Now I gotta edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do the creaming method. Um, you guys have probably already done this already because of making different recipes and stuff, but you don't understand what the process was. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing. So what we need is softened butter. Not melted, but softened. And we're gonna be using the KitchenAid. So just like our normal safety practices with KitchenAid, <clears throat> Anytime you're scraping anything, hold on to the off button. Anytime you're in there so that it couldn't turn on and only one person using it at a time so that if you're working in it, the next person doesn't turn it on on accident. Okay, we're gonna need the paddle. Pop the load. So what we're gonna need is you're gonna need a rubber spatula, portion scoop. You're gonna need your sheet pan. Parts of paper, we don't need it yet. We'll grab it when we have room. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be creaming our fats and sugars together. Okay, so our fat in this case is gonna be butter. You can use lard, you can use shortening, if you're making cupcakes, cakes, whatever it is. The creaming method applies throughout a bunch of different bakery products. So we're gonna be making cookies for this example, but that's it. So what we're gonna do is with the softened butter, you're gonna turn the paddle on and start to cream the butter together. Right now it's kind of hard, so it's not sticking to the outside of the thing, the bowl. Okay, it's not sticking, so what we want it to do is, as it warms up, we'll start to stick to the outside of the bowl. This is why we keep water and butter blend at room temperature, so you can say that step going right in, it's not making you see that. Alright, so now it's starting to stick to the side of the bowl. You see that? So we're going to add our sugars. What are our sugars in this recipe? Uh, white sugar, brown sugar. Cool. So we're going to use white sugar, so what we do is we get a cup of it, or the specified amount that we need, and we scrape the top off, lower this down. Like I said, if you're adding anything, just hold the off switch back there at the same time. And so for the brown sugar, just like normal, what we do is we pack this sugar in. This is pretty much the only ingredient that you're usually packing in, other, other than like raisins or something like that. So keep it off like that, add your brown sugar. At this point, scrape the sides, so it'll be an easier incorporation of the sugars. Okay, <clears throat> so with the sugar and fat being mixed together, what we're going to be doing is you're going to obviously be creaming them together. What happens is it incorporates air into the fat. Okay, so just like making whipped cream turns into a liquid and then into like a kind of semi-solid, same thing's going to happen here. Start it on slow and then move your way up so that the sugar doesn't come flying out of the bowl. So right now it's kind of crumbly. It means it's not fully incorporated and the butter's a little bit um, hard yet or cold. And as you keep going, as you start creaming, it'll start to stick to the outside of the bowl. So what's happening right now is it's all friction force. The butter's being warmed up by the friction of the two metals touching each other, believe it or not. So the warm air and then the movement is actually causing friction to be warming up the butter. Or butter blend, whatever we're using. As it starts to warm up, it'll start to stick to the side of the bowl, and that's when you know that the air is being incorporated in the bowl. If you were to use liquid, this process won't work that. It won't ever incorporate air. Having air in a cookie will lose that chewy And right. So now what we have is that, everyone see it? At this phase, because there's no flour in there, flour and liquid together make what protein? Anyone remember? What's the stretchy protein that's in bread that gives it structure? Gluten. gluten, that's right. Because there's no moisture and no flour, maybe flour in here, there's no gluten development. So you can keep whipping this and whipping this and it wouldn't cause a problem. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add our liquids. In this case, our liquids are gonna be vanilla. You add your specified amount of vanilla. And then you add your eggs, which is gonna be our liquid in this sense, even though this is gonna give us protein for all the structure. The egg protein doesn't over mix and get over to but flour it up. It's gonna mix together. It's gonna make a batter pretty much, so just like a dough, but it's softer, so it won't form the out of it. All that's mixed in, we're gonna do just like foam egg whites, like meringue, it's incorporating more air into that 
creaming section, okay? We're going to add our baking soda. How much is the bubble? Let's see if we nice level piece of this. Add that into your flour. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sift that together, make sure it's fully incorporated. Because if it's not fully incorporated, some cookies will rise and some cookies will be flat. Does that make sense? Because you're not going to mix a lot of the flour into the batter. Okay, so now we're going to turn it off, drop her down, hold the off, and scrape the sides, really get in that bottom so there's no random chunks of sugar, butter, or egg. Okay. Also, to clean off your spatula, you can just scrape it right on your paddle. Put your spatula not on the table, but into some other vessel. Okay, got our liquids in there. Now we're going to add our flour. All of it at once. Okay, so that's our flour and our leavening agent, so all of our dry ingredients. And this is really critical to start slow or else it might pop, pop the flour into the air. Now that we're mixing the dough, what's, what's forming is there's moisture and flour. What protein is forming in this moisture and flour? Gluten, that's right. Gluten and gliadin. So that's what gives bread its chewy structure, which is something that you want. And in this case, you don't want a lot of structure because you want to be soft and crumbly and chewy cookies. Okay, so take a look at this. Is this dough done being mixed or needs more time? What do you think? What's a guess? More. Needs more time? More time? Okay, so we have another ingredient, which is gonna be chocolate chips or walnuts, chocolate chunks or macadamia nuts, whatever you wanna add. But if we were to mix this completely till it's finished, and then we were to add our other ingredient and mix it again, what do you think would happen with the cookies? It'd be overmixed. It would be overmixed and it'd be too much gluten and it'd be tough. So right before it's done, we're gonna add our other ingredient, which in this case is chocolate chips. It's probably more than we need. Um, there's a small splash of water too to help hydrate this. Um, if we were to add the chocolate chips at the same time as the flour and mix it, what do you think would happen then to the chocolate chips? If you overmixed it with chocolate chips, what do you think would happen to the chips? What if the chips break? Yeah. Chips would then start to break apart and there wouldn't be solid chunks in there. So the way chocolate chip cookies were invented was there was a lady that wanted to make chocolate cookies but was too lazy to heat up the chocolate to make it a liquid, to make it a you know a dark black colored chocolate cookie. So instead she threw chips in thinking it would melt and that's how the chocolate chip cookie was invented. But we want to have full chips or chunks or whatever you're using in there. Same thing would really happens with like nuts or when you mix like blueberry muffins. Blueberry muffin, you want a muffin that has blueberries, not a blue muffin. You ever see that happening? So that's what happens usually. So just give it a small little mix from there. And that is it. So what you want to do, drop this down, holding the off. Small little flat, little mass flour in there is not a problem. I'm going to get all of this out of here. And the one thing with this dough is what we want to do is really want to mix the bottom. Because the chocolate chips will be floating at the top because we didn't really mix them in a lot. And the bottom won't have any chocolate chips. So when you're making your cookies, your first three or four are going to have a lot of chocolate chips and your last three or four are going to have none. So that's where you want to get that last mixture, or last mixing, just do it by hand like this. And that will be the creamy method for these drop cookies. If you're making sheet cookies, which is like sugar cookies, same creamy method. If you're making, um, I don't know, icebox cookies, same creamy method. Cupcakes, so when you get a recipe, and there's no instructions, it just says creamy method, you know how to make that recipe. Got it? Any questions? Come on, it's gotta be a question. Well, Hobie, what's the question? Why don't you use all the chocolate chips? Because if I use, I don't know who measured that out for my Mesa floss, but it's too much. Our food order. All right, thanks. Why, you hungry? No. <laughs> all right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna use this, we're gonna use this size portion scoop because we have a banquet tomorrow. Killing two birds with one stone. We're gonna bake them in the oven. Um, by using this portion scoop, which is smaller, if I were to bake this in the oven, we're baking this in the oven. What temperature would I use for each size cookie? What do you think? That's why the recipes usually don't have time and temperature on them. So what would you say? Hotter temperature? Colder yeah. temperature? I always do a colder temperature. Yeah, and then the hotter one for the bigger one. So if you did the hotter one for the bigger one, it would actually cook on the outside and still be raw on the yeah. inside. 
So you would actually want to do a colder temperature on the larger ones and a longer amount of time. Sound good? Cool, so we're gonna do this size scoop. And that's the creamy method with chocolate chip cookies. No applause. That's good. Uh, that's good. Uh, let's get that out of the way.